Hey, how's it going people? Today I'm going to explain margins in CSS. Margins are the space around an element. I'll create an H1 element, type in your name, or something that's kind of short, and we'll need a paragraph. I'll generate some text by typing lorem, then hitting tab. Let me just zoom in a little bit. To give you a diagram of margins, I'm going to right click our H1 element and go to inspect. At the bottom of my elements window, we have this diagram. It kind of resembles an onion because it has layers. We have the element itself and its dimensions, padding, border, then margins. Padding is between the element itself and any borders. Margins are the area outside of any borders. Today we'll be working with margins, the area outside of any elements. Let's close this window. Naturally, there's a few pixels of margin around our body. The letters in our H1 element and our paragraph aren't directly next to the border of our window. So we can eliminate that. We will select the body element within our CSS style sheet. We will set the margin to be zero pixels. So now the letters are directly next to the edge of the web browser. And if I were to expand this, you can kind of see that. So that's all that margin is. It's the area outside of an element. To give you another example, let's delete our H1 element along with our paragraph. We'll create two div boxes. We need two pairs of div elements. I'll create a class for each of these divs. Class, box. Then they will each have a unique ID. ID equals box one. The ID for the second box will be box two. And then I'll give each of these some text. Box one, box two. All right, now let's style these boxes. So after our body element, let's select the box class. Anything that's a box, let's add a border. Five pixels solid is fine. I'll change the font size to be 5EM width to 50 pixels, height 250 pixels. And I'm just going to zoom out a little bit until our view is at 100%. Let me color box one and box two. We are selecting the ID of box one for the background color. Let's set that to be red, but let's select a more custom red because it's cool. All right, then box two will be blue. All right, there are marginal directions. We can apply margin to the top of an element, the right, the bottom, or the left, or all sides. With box one, I will set the margin top property to be 50 pixels. That's going to add 50 pixels of margin at the top of this element, box one. There's also margin bottom. Now there's 50 pixels of margin after box one. Margin left. The margin's now on the left. Margin right. The margin's now on the right, but you can't see that because divs are block level elements. They take up the entire horizontal space. You could apply margin to all sides evenly just with margin. So margin, 50 pixels. That applies 50 pixels of margin to the top, right, bottom, left. So if we were to apply this margin to a class like the box class, both box one and box two will have 50 pixels of margin around each element. There's also margin auto. It is possible to set an element's margin to take up the entire space. I can take any of these elements, such as box one, and push it all the way to the right of my web browser using margin left. Margin dash left, then I will set it to be auto. The margin on the left side of box one will take up as much room as possible. So box one is going to stick to the right hand side of the web browser. Margin right won't appear to do anything because it's already left justified. Now, if you would like an element to stay in the center of your web browser, you can just set margin to be auto. So box one is going to stay in the middle of my web page. If I were to apply this property to the box class, that will affect box two as well. 
So now box one and box two should stay in the middle of my web browser. All right, everybody, so those are margins. In simple terms, it's the space around an element. And that is an introduction to margins in CSS.